in this lecture we will look at partitioning partitioning is the first step in the physical design process i have borrowed these slides uh, from the slides by these authors and i acknowledge them <coughs> so what is partitioning partitioning is basically decomposition of a complex system into smaller sub subsystems <coughs> it is done hierarchically you see here what i mean is what is required to be designed a big system is often decomposed at system level into smaller pcbs the best example is what we find is uh, from the book physical design automation by navid sharwani is the design of a computer itself you know the old desktop computers so what what a computer is required to do is at the top level is partitioned into many printed circuit boards so you may have a pcb to store data it may be a memory pc board pcb you may have a motherboard which is the pcb having the processor you may have an io board and you may have other uh, uh, auxiliary memories like the rams so you have what the computer is required to do the entire functionality can be split into different print, printed circuit boards that is called system level partitioning excuse me and what each pcb should do can away can again be partitioned into sub functions each of those sub functions can be implemented by a chip by an integrated circuit so that we call it the board level partitioning and again in turn what a chip is required to do if it is a very big chip you may again partition into sub circuits and blocks and design each of them independently that is the most important advantage of partitioning basically we are doing it hierarchically we are partitioning the entire system into uh, hierarchically or recursively till each system is of manageable size and uh, the most important advantage is that each sub system can be designed independently this is especially a very crucial a uh, thing a very important thing in integrated circuit industry ic industry because time to market is a very important criteria for the success or failure of a chip so if we can partition um the for example if you look at chip level partitioning if you can partition what an integrated circuit should do into sub circuits and each of them can be designed independently and um, now that we have um uh, different teams working in different countries say intel is trying to come up with a chip and part of it can be designed in india part of it can be designed in taiwan part of it can be designed in united states so we can design them independently and so you will be able to reduce the time to market <coughs> and that is uh, one of the most important advantage of partitioning and uh, when we partition one of the impo most important objectives is to minimize the interconnections between partitioning because as we'll see now interconnections between the partitions is adds to the cost and uh, we have to minimize them and uh, the more the interconnections the more the difficulty in interfacing the subsystems together at the end <coughs> as i already said that partitioning can be at different levels in this course on physical design automation we will concentrate only on what is the netlist level partitioning or you know a gate level netlist how we can partition it <coughs> so this is an example of netlist level partitioning we have a netlist of 48 gates and this shows partitions as you can see all these partitions are are almost of the same size 15 16 and 17 gates and the nets cut across by the partition we call it the cut set so here we have a cut set of 4 <coughs> you see i talked about partitioning at different levels now when we do what is called as a uh, system level partitioning we are splitting the entire function a uh, uh, system is required to do into 
different PCBs <coughs> and the delay at that level I am calling it delay S yes, to denote system level partitioning and delay B to denote board level partitioning and delay C to denote chip level partitioning. Now what we will observe is that the system level partitioning is often so much greater than the board level partitioning which is often so much greater than the chip level partitioning. Now this illustrates that we have the interconnection between two PCBs and uh, here within a PCB we have the interconnection between two chips and within a chip we have the interconnection uh, between two sub circuits or sub blocks and uh, if the delay between two blocks is of the order of X then between two chips in a PCB is 10 times more actually this is for a pretty older technology and uh, in today's technology this will be even higher that means the delay between two chips will be even of the order of 50 or 100 times than the delay between two blocks in the same chip and similarly we have the delay between uh, two PCBs will be of a higher order um, than the delay between two chips on the same PCB. <coughs> so that is why we have to make sure <coughs> that the first of all that the number of interconnections between the partitions are minimized um, because the communication is costly <coughs> and if you are not careful partitioning can actually worsen the system performance <coughs> and uh, especially because of what we have observed in the last slide that we must make sure that critical nets are not split across uh, partition because critical nets as you know are the nets having the longest uh, paths or longest delay in terms of delay in a circuit. Um, so supposing you have a big design um, and the design is so big that it cannot be uh, implemented on a single FPGA and you need three FPGA then you will have to find out some way to partition it how will you partition them so that it can be mapped you know typically in VLSI design practice today if somebody comes up with a new design first it is prototyped on an FPGA and if it works as intended and as expected then we go for a you know full custom design and an ASIC and application specific integrated circuit so uh, how will you partition it that is a uh, big question and you must make sure we must make sure that the performance is not compromised in fact the performance must also be considered while partitioning <clears throat> I'm just saying this because we can't do partitioning just blindly trying to minimize the cut set there might be some critical net uh, which is cut across a partition <clears throat> which we may have to avoid and when you do partitioning usually uh, a gate level net list is uh, represented as a graph the the gates are represented as nodes and the interconnections between the gates are represented as edges so we look at some of the objective functions when we do partitioning the first as I already said that the interconnections between the partitions must be minimized <coughs> then the delay by the partition must be minimized we saw that because if you're going to have nets uh, spanning the partitions it is uh, invariably going to be higher so as much as possible we must make sure that uh, critical nets or nets which are uh, very sensitive uh, to delay must not be cut across by the partition <coughs> the number of terminals is an interesting phenomenon it is very similar to the interconnections because the more interconnections you have between two partition you will have more terminals but it has a different perspective at the system level because at the system level when we are partitioning we are partitioning the entire functionality into different PCBs and PCBs if you have observed in old desktop computers how the two PCBs are connected by a bus which is just a collection of wires and the bus is connected to the PCB board by what is called as a PCB connector now there is a limitation on the number of connections in a PCB connector so when you partition at the top level at the system level we must make sure that the number of terminals coming out to be connected to the other PCB is limited okay because we have a limitation on the connector 
and at the board level of course again you have a limitation based on the package into which the chip goes we have 16 pin package we have 64 pin package so you have a limitation on the number of terminals you have um, in a chip <clears throat> we must also have the area of each partition in mind this is especially important in chip level partitioning because typically uh, at the chip level each partition is laid out separately so um, the whole reason being that layout is a pretty complicated layout uh, process and so if we can partition them each of them can be laid out separately so we must try to make the partitions uh, almost of the equal area so that uh, uh, the complexity of laying out is equally distributed and uh, the number of partitions again is an interesting trade-off because the more the number of partitions you're going to have different subsystems easily designed but again you have to come back you have to integrate all of them together so we must not make so many partitions that interfacing becomes difficult in fact if at all you're going to have a good partitioning a good partitioning philosophy is one in which the time taken to partition the circuit and the time taken to integrate it back must consume a very less percentage of the time if partitioning was not done at all I hope you understand that we must <clears throat> make sure that the time taken to partition and also the time taken to integrate them back must be a small percentage of the time taken if partitioning was not done at all if you had designed the whole system without partitioning it so there is always a trade-off <clears throat> between the integration complexity and the design complexity so the more you the more the partitions you have you might be able to design all of them individually because they'll all be smaller but interfacing is going to be difficult and at the chip level the number of partitions is determined by the design style where you're going to have a standard cell based design and also by the placement algorithm <clears throat> You see, when we do partitioning, we are trying to partition a, a circuit or a chip into n partitions. We always prefer bipartitioning. The reason being that algorithms for bipartitioning are well defined and powerful. And a multi way partitioning or a K way partitioning, as it's called in CAD terminology, where you try to split the whole circuit into K partitions, uh, can be uh, accomplished as a series of bipartitioning as long as k is a power of 2. <coughs> I want to talk about classification of partitioning algorithms that algorithms uh, can be classified on different basis so here is a classification based on the availability of initial partition on this basis partitioning algorithms can be broadly classified as either constructive or iterative so as the name says in constructive algorithm we are going to construct a partition and uh, they are far from being optimal and uh, in an iterative algorithm we accept an initial partition and we improve it so for constructive algorithms are uh, algorithms like random selection algorithms or cluster growth they are usually not optimal at all and uh, they are usually used as a pre-processing algorithm for an iterative improvement algorithm <laughs> here I have a small example of uh, cluster growth which is used to generate an initial partition supposing we have n nodes and we want to uh, partition them into four partitions um, so we need four partitions uh, from the initial circuit so what we can do is we can start with the node which has the highest number of edges so this is a small illustration if we have uh, uh, a netlist represented as a graph like this and um, uh, the nodes represent the gates and the edges represent the nets or the interconnections between the gates so you have A and C having two edges so A and C you try to form it into a cluster and now that they are into a cluster from A and C together there is two edges between B C to B and A to B so A C and B you try to 
form into a cluster. So in this way, you start with the node with the highest edge, you place it in a cluster, and then take the node which is heavily connected to the node in this cluster, and again you add it to that cluster. So in this way, you keep repeating the process till the cluster is of size m, where m is the n by 4. So this is one crude way of forming partitions. Of course, this is this will not be optimal at all, but uh, this is just a way to form some initial partition, which can be given as an input uh, to an iterative improvement algorithm, which will improve it later. The partition algorithms are also classified based on the, their nature, whether they are deterministic or probabilistic. Deterministic, as you know, they produce repeatable results, and uh, probabilistic algorithms, they produce different results every time you run them. So the same problem, uh, and you run it today, you get one result. The same problem, uh, you apply a probabilistic algorithm, the same algorithm, in fact, tomorrow, you will get a different result, because there is some probabilist probability introduced into the algorithm. We will see some examples. <clears throat> the partitioning algorithms can also be classified based on the process used for partitioning. And here we have something called as the group migration algorithms. And we have another class of algorithms which try to simulate the annealing in metals. So simulated annealing is a famous optimization technique. In fact, simulated annealing is a general optimization technique which can be, which is uh, really used in different problems, in different fields of engineering. And there can be evolution-based algorithms like genetic algorithm based uh, uh, techniques for partitioning. And there is also a class of what is called as the performance driven partitioning, especially as in later technologies, uh, performance is a serious issue and um, the interconnect delay becomes comparable to the gate delay in submicron technology. So performance driven partitioning is also an important uh, type of partitioning algorithms. So what is the group migration? We will talk about it because we are going to discuss the cunningham len algorithm in the next lecture, which is basically a group migration algorithm. See, in the group migration algorithm, um, they believe in migration of nodes across the partition. And uh, we start with some initial partition, and then we move nodes across the partition to improve it. So this illustration will explain that. So here we have two partition. I'm assuming an initial partition, and these are the nodes. And you can see that this node is having two nets to this um, partition, and so we can say that the cut set is two. Cut set is three. Sorry. So supposing this node is moved across the partition to this partition, we can say that the cut set has become two now, right? Because I moved this node across to the other partition. So these two connections, which were internal, have become external now. So they are they form the cut set. And these three connections, which were the cut set actually, have become internal nodes. So they don't contribute to the cut set anymore. And so you can see that the cost has reduced. Now, if we interchange these two nodes across the partition, you can see here this green node if I take it to the other partition and this yellow node, if I bring it to this partition, you can see that the cut set actually increases. The cut set has become four now because of this move. All other nodes being the same, these three nodes are in the same position. Of course, green has moved here, so all these connections have become external connections or they are across the partition. And um, from the green node, you have an edge to these two nodes, and because green node has come here, so they become internal connections, and they don't contribute to the cut set anymore. But nevertheless, exchanging two nodes across the partition in this example has actually increased the cut set by one. So we say that the reduced cost is minus one. So this is the principle the group migration algorithms use. Try to find out nodes across the partition which can be swapped. And when they are swapped, does the cost increase or decrease? And then we will try to find out which swaps can reduce the cut set. That is the idea of the Cunningham-Lin algorithm, which we'll be discussing in the next lecture.